now we have the formed piece. That's how we make the tunnel section. But steel gives kind of a rough edge to the finished product, so we have to sand and polish it to get the crystal clear appearance that everybody wants. It is, however, crystal clear in the inside from the very beginning. Coming down a little bit. The first thing we want to do is we want to inspect this piece. They cut off the ends and polish the ends so you can see all the way through it. The idea is to make sure that it's a good piece of acrylic. Once deemed a clean piece, the acrylic is again sanded, polished, and ready for yet another inspection, this time by the client. What we're doing here is we're looking at the acrylic for a clarity factor. We're trying to make sure that there are no distortions. What we put in back of it is a grid with a light on it so we can see whether the grid remains parallel in both directions. Developers of the Newport Aquarium closely inspect the 30-foot penguin window, the uniquely shaped riverbank wall, and a piece of the tunnel section. Basically, we can do almost anything anyone wants, but it's not just a matter of doing a different shape, it's a matter of doing a shape that's pleasant and, and achieves the goal you're after, which is to show the beautiful fish. It's interesting that the business we've chose, the building of windows, it's ironic that if we do a good enough job with the window, you don't even see the window. What you're looking at is the fish and the exhibitry. And that's, of course, what we want people to see. Shipped across country on seven truckloads, the seamless acrylic tunnels and windows are ready to be installed. The acrylic itself and the installation was very unique in that there aren't many people in the world who can provide panels that large and who can install them. Um, the concrete was completed before the acrylic Installation, therefore, the tolerances needed to be exact prior to the installation. Uh, you'll note some of the panels were very large. The uh, penguin panel was 11,000 pounds, so it took quite a, quite a bit of coordination for the installation of those panels to be installed. As the aquarium site progressed, another project was just getting started. About a mile away, in the heart of Newport, an empty warehouse is transformed into a temporary aquarium. When you're opening a new aquarium, you don't really know when the exhibits are going to be ready for the animals to come in and so you have to have some place to hold your animals until such time as you can get them because unlike say i don't know maybe cars or refrigerators or anything else you can't just order these things on april 1st and get them in april 10th and so you you need the warehouse for that kind of flexibility it's impossible to operate without that sort of flexibility this interim holding facility also allows the aquarists to carefully examine the fish to make sure they're healthy and to allow them to adapt to their new surroundings. By the fall of 1998, the Newport Aquarium was completely enclosed, which meant work could begin on creating the natural habitats inside the tanks for the stars of our story. You've probably seen their work at theme parks and resorts around the world and didn't even know it. Rock and Waterscape really is, uh, is a company that makes other people's visions come into reality. Located in sunny Irvine, California, Rock and Waterscape is hired to create the interior habitats of the fish tanks. We specialize in what we consider sort of artificial, uh, natural, replicated environments. One of the best reasons for our, our work is that it's very durable. Uh, it's not going to overgrow or die. Uh, this is a mold from a natural tree that we're pouring material into, and it'll create uh, some parts that will then seam together to create the trees. This is actually for the Amazon tank. This is the type of thing that comes out of the mold, and then we use a combination of these flipped around uh, in, in every direction and in a combination of handwork as well to create sort of a total tree like this. At the Newport Aquarium, Lynn Miller actually slaps on a combination of sawdust and wood glue to simulate moss. It gives the trees a more realistic look. It's kind of like being a kid, <laughs> making mud pies or something. Yeah. 
it's just nice to give a little bit of dimension to the trees. Because a lot of that carving, they'll add a lot of depth to it. And these will get flat in areas. So it just gives it a little bit more life to it. This is a soft coral, or it's actually a sponge, which is uh, near impossible to make a good mold of from nature, just due to the nature of the